Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna show you another organizational feature of Adobe Premiere Pro, and that is how to use markers. I mentioned it in an earlier video, but I kinda wanted to cover it in a full video on itself. Markers are really great to share information across different Adobe programs, as well as share information within Adobe Premiere Pro itself. So what exactly is a marker? Markers are like these little things right here. They help you by leaving a timestamp of something important, something that you find important in the footage. Maybe it's every time some person comes in a frame, maybe it's the start of where you want the music to start, anything that you want. They're completely and totally customizable up to you and that is what makes them so valuable whenever you're trying to organize your timeline. So in the past, we've organized our timeline by changing the colors and stuff in here so we can see the different areas. But if we wanna organize it by time, by maybe um, creating different chapters and stuff like that, we can add markers. And it's as simple as going in the timeline, clicking right here, or on the foot piece of footage itself. So for example, let's say we have this piece of footage right here. And for some reason, I find this point right here significant. I wanna do something with it in the future. I can then click on the M button, and you'll see that it adds a marker. And what we're doing here is we're adding a marker to the sequence itself. We're not adding a marker to the footage. This is a sequence marker up here. Footage markers will appear like if we double click this over here in the source monitor, we can do the exact same thing. So this is the footage itself. If we click M, we'll add a marker and you see that it's added onto the footage right there. You can see the little marker and that is a footage marker. What we're doing is we're creating sequence markers. Um, currently, but you can also do either or. They're just the only change is that this is going to incorporate the entire sequence. These are going to be every time we drag one of uh, these pieces of footage, which is what 555. Every time we drag this onto it, it's going to have that marker, which is also important maybe if you're duplicating footage in some sort of way to see where you could use it as the point that you cut it, so that you know when you put it in where you should um, cut it like uh, down to another one of the uses. So what we can do is we can first off, we can click the M button and that'll create the marker. And while you're still over a marker, you can click M again and it'll bring up this dialog where you can edit it. You can also right click right here and then you can go into edit marker to get to that as well. So, you know, you can give it a main uh, name for some reason. Uh, let's go with title should start here. So maybe we want a title to begin. So we can go title should start here, comments, um, Japan, start maybe that's is what we want to put the title here we can do that and let's say we wanted to give all of these a light blue color we can then give it a sort of a, a comment marker sort of a general purpose and then you have a chapter marker and a segmentation marker and these are just different types of markers they don't really have different functionality all they are is saved to different colors um, and then down here you can actually attach a web link to it as well so that you can click on it and it'll have a web link later on um, you can use this in different programs and you can just visit it yourself uh, so exa for example, you could say something like, um, should look like, I don't know, The Dark Knight, this scene in The Dark Knight, uh, you know, the Batman movie. So you could put the link there, and then when you're editing it, you can click on the marker, go watch it, and you're like, oh, that's how he wants it to look. Then you have flash cue point, which is sort of outdated, sort of not. It's going to flash a cue, and what a cue is, is that I know the Flash player uses it, so Adobe Flash uses it. Um, but that's been outdated a lot of browsers. Basically what that does is it flashes an event so that the browser will change something like adding text or adding a button once you get to that point in the video. A little bit more technical, probably not uh, something that you'd normally be working with uh, in your compositions. So then once we have it edited the way we want, we have some of this stuff, we can change its color. <coughs> we can go ahead and click on the button right here. And you see that we have this marker right here. And you know, we can do this the entire length of it. We can click M in as many different places that we want and add as many different markers. And you'll see if I hover over here, it has title should start here and then it has the description right below it and then the time code for it working. Another great feature of markers is that they are, as long as you export it in a format that supports markers, you can actually use the markers to, um, to move in between different Adobe programs and the markers will still stay present. So for example, if I took this and let's um, see how there's a marker on this piece of footage. If I right click on this and I go into replace with After Effects composition, it's gonna bring up After Effects. Once it's loaded, all you have to do is give it a name. We're just gonna do some random name real quick for the example. And then you'll see right here, you see that right there? That is the marker. So the marker that you have created inside of Premiere Pro, right, you can see it. Um, let me drag that piece of footage because it was 555. So you see that we had that marker at this point in the footage. And now in After Effects, 
you can see that it has that marker as well. So markers are able to be transferred from different areas. It also transfers to Prelude and uh, probably a couple other Adobe programs as well. Now, if you want to see a good list of all the markers that you have in the composition, you can actually go up here into Window, and there is an entire panel for markers right here. So you can click on it to open it up. Mine is open right here. And from here, you can see that it has a list of all of the markers right now within the sequence. So we have that one that we created at the beginning called title should start here and it has Japan start and then we have those three that we created and of course you can create any of them right here and then if you see that if I click M here and give it a quick name something like I don't know city click OK you'll see that the marker updates to that as well and that means they're searchable so if you want to see where all your titles should go you can go ahead and search title and you'll see that the title is there and if you put the word title there it'll be there as well and you can also search by color so if you color coordinate your markers you can click on the color and you will only see those color markers come up and so this is for the sequence if I double click or just single click actually on any piece of footage you'll see that the markers for that piece of footage come up as well which is great to look at information on that as well so if we had like really big descriptions that we created in prelude or after effects for this we can go to that markers panel and we can see what we described and what's the information that we are trying to portray at the earlier point that is basically it on markers they are a simple thing but they're really important to sort of uh, create different marks a little caveat with markers and this is just something that I've come up um, we're having a discussion with someone about this and it's actually come up a few different times is that if you use the I believe it is the ripple edit tool um, to sort of delete things you see that it changes all the markers in the sequence and that can be a problem if you're using these markers for sound so if you're trying to like create beats or you're trying to create something where the markers are just supposed to stay in place there is not a way to just make them stay in place so if you ever want to do something with the ripple delete my best piece of advice is to instead do this is to take it and delete it and then now you're gonna be like now we have this gap now I have to highlight everything that is where the track select forward tool comes into play so all you have to do is just click in that gap and it'll select everything forward and then drag it back and snap it and you'll see that the markers don't move in this scenario just how the um, ripple edit tool works is it takes everything in front of it and moves it back this means it edits markers I think there should be a setting that makes it so markers are sticky meaning they don't move but there is not that setting so just understand that if you want to keep your markers all in the same place if you've done all the work to put the markers in there do not use the ripple edit tool because it will destroy all of your marker progress Anyway, that is it on the, the uh, marker tutorial. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, those in the comment section below. If you got, um, you know, if you want to see more videos similar to this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day about the different Adobe programs and different tutorials and stuff like that. So yeah, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, see ya.